Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this video I have for you game one of a best of three between Pixie and Vich in the semi-finals of the first Steel Division 2 championship. Today they are going to be playing on Haros Hayer and on the Soviet side we have Pixie using the 84th Guard Rifles with the Vanguard deployment type and on the Axis side we have Vich using the 20th Panzer and the Maverick deployment type. So previously we saw Pixie take out Sean using a Vanguard 352nd. It was an interesting game, but I feel like the 84th Guard Rifles can afford a similar playstyle, which may play into the hands of Pixie during this game. The reason I say that is because the 352nd, they make use of good support weapons, uh, disheartened infantry, and then a couple of big guns in the form of the Agpathers. It's very similar for the 84th because they have the use of now Chernos, which were added more recently to the division, plus the OB infantry guns. They have 45mm AT guns, and they also, of course, have then the big guns, the IS-2s. So we might see one come onto the field. It depends if uh, Pixie feels like he can afford one. But either way, uh, the IS-2s would be fantastic for controlling the open ground either side of the towns. The trouble with doing so is that there isn't really many points to contest in the areas either side but could be a good way to potentially cut off the reinforcing roads allowing for an eventual advantage in the centre. On the side of Vich, the 20th Panzer is an interesting division for sure. He used uh, the Kuruk division previously to defeat Gonzo uh, which is a very much a massive infantry play style. In this case the 20th Panzer, a lot more armour involved, uh, uses a lot of Panzer IVs to accompany units like Erzastruppen, Ostruppen. I think the 20th Panzer also has access to the standard Panzergrenz and Pioneers as well. So that's what I expect to see on the side of it. Just a really strong infantry armour playstyle. Right, let's jump in and see what kind of units are coming down. On the bottom side, a massive amount of infantry here. We've got these Sepelid Rocks. There's going to be multiple units of these Chernos, which are the disheartened infantry squads. Two Sepelid Rocks. These are 12 man Flamer squads. They are some of the best close range infantry in the game. Then you've got a PTRS squad there, Mizi Vod, 45mm. Make that two 45mm AT guns and a, an OB 25. Uh, the PTRS will be actually pretty nice for critting the Panzer IV. Moving into the center, we see the T-34Es uh, with the PTRS-41 leading the charge. There's going to be four units of flamers there for the time being and an AT gun. On the top side, Pixie is using more flamers with the PTRS-45 mil and we see three units of Sepali PPSH. Now I'm surprised to still see people using Sepali PPSH. I find that they have very poor value and they often just fail to do anything fantastic in the game. They're 10 point squads so I guess if you kill anything they pay themselves off but not often they do. By the way on the side of Vich on the top side here we have uh, more Flammenwerfers with the 45mm AT gun coming in there. Going to be a Battlefield behind that and two units of Stostrup as a Stostrup and IG covering the top side. I assume that IG is going to be covering the open ground on the top side of the town. Going into the town, we see a couple units of Ostruppen, Stostrup, three units of Flammenwerfer, and the Barifjera, which is the artillery command. And then further down, we see the Ace, Panzer IV Hearth. Uh, the Hearth unit basically just has a different camo. Ace units in Steel Division 2 don't have any combat bonuses at all, and they just have a different camo, but that's cool. You see that there, a 45mm captured Russian gun. Uh, with two stars troop and a pack 40 and then further down we see another panzer four supporting two ostrup and two make that three flammenwerfers and a panzer Shrek. so as expected the panzer four is going to be accompanying uh, this infantry to the front line but what is this we see geo 145 bs these are recon planes with napalm bombs and it is not something that I expected to see at the start of this game. He's actually brought out four of them 
two heading toward the center town one heading toward the top side these can be fantastic for destroying support weapons especially things like the OBs and the 45mm IT guns uh, I think they also pinned down infantry quite quickly since there was a more recent buff to napalm weapons in general but we'll have to see how they do I guess he can just spot the transports and target those so that's what he's currently doing here looking for the bombs onto the PTRS potentially onto the Akutemachiki going to be dropping one set of napalm bombs there it does make that start to fall back got another one coming in onto this bottom side doesn't actually give that a target I think he's more concerned with microing his infantry here the double Flammenwerfer coming up against the double Ognemachiki the Stosh troop there plus the flame going to be annihilating one of the squads so that goes immediately in the favour of Vich we do see a Yak 1B coming in that's going to be having an absolute turkey shoot about against this amount of recon planes like one pass should be enough to shoot that down easy pickings we'll probably look for the kill onto the top side now Hearth moving into the backside of the town. Going to be engaging this Sapali PPSH. Oh, that gets taken out by the 45mm AT gun. Looks like the recon plane on this bottom side managed to escape in time. But triple Flammenwerfer there should be able to kill off that PTRS that's made ground. Uh, the Urza's to open Flammenwerfer Stostru, one in the town. Meanwhile, on the top side, uh, we do see. A unit getting killed here. Looks like the napalm did land on one of the transports at least. But the triple Flammenwerfer double sauce troop should be able to win against the triple flam uh, flamer squads of Pixie. So that's interesting. Either way, Panzer IV going to be engaging the 45mm from range. The 45mm does have like a 10-20% like a penetration from that range. But really nice last shot there from the Panzer IV. Gets two damage onto the 45mm and gets the kill. Lovely stuff indeed. But big old push coming through on the bottom side. Big infantry disparity here. That's going to be six units of Chernos pushing onto the three Flammenwerfers in the forest. The Flammenwerfers, if they work together, can probably hold strong against the Chernos on their own. But there is, of course, the two Superlative Rocks following those up with the VZ VOD there. Now we see the 45mm engaging the Panzer IV again on the bottom side. That's going to be continuing that engagement at range Panzer IV doing well so far these two star Panzer IVs are really strong sometimes but we are seeing the IL-237 mil come in whilst the infantry engagement occurs on the top side of the map but let's have a look at this lovely kill there took way more shots than I expected but let's zoom up here it looks like those three flamer squads have been annihilated by the engagement between the double sauce troop, triple flammenwerfer, and the superlative rocks also on the run there. And this IL-2, really, really strong, actually coming in for the shot onto Arthur as well. Is the ace going to go down at the start? I don't think the Gepard's going to be able to do much about this. And there we have it. IL-2 gets the job done. Two and fours killed. I believe that has pretty much paid itself off. Almost. Either way, Triple Flammenwerfer have currently pushed back most of the Chernos so far. Even the Zapari Rocks here being forced to fall back by Pixie. Ostropen are suffering. And they're going to be forced to fall back. These Erzastropen, I'm a little bit concerned about them being stat stood out in the open there. That seems like a bit of a mistake. Just getting those into heavy cover would make the engagement versus the Chernos that much better, which would be such a big difference either way two geos coming in with the uh, napalm bombs once again you see uh, another gepard joining the battle on the bottom side looks like bitch is trying to get on top of the use of pixie's planes il2 still hovering about after all and might be able to find a kill onto the panzer IV if bitch is not too careful there it looks like that's going to be deployed to bon to the bottom side Right, here come the napalm bombs. What are they going to be hitting? The Chernos there. Let's do a bit of damage to those. Looking for the kill maybe onto the leader squad. Doesn't manage to find it since they are falling back. A little bit of damage reduction there. This IL-2 now going to be evacking. 
Panzer IV in the town is safe for the time being. So the Sepadiorox trying to get into a position to capture the flag on the top side. Uh, meanwhile on the bottom, this Sepadi PPSH has actually managed to sneak behind and put influence over this flag. Currently, Vich has the flags in the town, the two flags there, so he's 13 to 11, even though Pixie is capturing this one briefly on the bottom side. And with the Panzer IV out of the way, the T-34E is able to push forwards onto these Ostropen, but of course Vich doesn't want to allow that to happen, so has brought in two Panzer III's to contest. Has turned off the APCR shell. It turns the APCR shell back on. Looks like that one's going to go down. This Panzer III should be able to finish the job now that that is crew panicked and shooter killed. The T-34A trades for another Panzer IV, but this is really bad for Pixie because he's left his infantry without any armor support whatsoever, whilst this Panzer III has pretty much nothing that can kill it on the ground. The only threat would be the IL-2 37mm uh, coming in again, unless the P-3 finds the bombing kill. We've got four bombs coming down here. Lovely bombing strike actually does do a lot of damage to the Ostrupen and forces all of them back, but the Panzer III does not get pinned, which is going to allow it to use the HE and its machine guns to do plenty of damage to this infantry that just can't fight back. And usually with the Soviet side you'd see a lot of PTRDs, from things like Gavardia DP and so on. But in this case, the Cherno Sepadi Rocks, there's no PTRDs in sight, and the PTRS squad died earlier. But here comes the uh, the triple recon aircraft again. Really not often you see these used so much. But they're gonna certainly pin and kill plenty of units, that's for sure. Well, it looks like the recon spotted this 45mm AT gun, and he's gonna be going for that kill. Now these only cost 20 points, so killing a 35 point AT gun with them is really good value. I just often don't find that recon aircraft in general are worth the activation points on a division. That's going to find the AT gun kill, for sure. We do see that one of the Chernos died moving into the town here, and this one's going to be pinned down very quickly indeed. We currently see an extended engagement in the centre as Pixie has reinforce this quite a bit. T-34E though going to be engaging now in the 45mm on the on the road. 45mm will struggle to penetrate the T-34 at that range but does get a lovely turret stuck crit there. Thing is the T-34E should be able to continue to engage but doesn't look like it is. As long as the turret's facing the wrong way or the right way when that happens it can continue to engage usually but in this case nope. 25 more, we're going to have plenty of time on target. Triple Urzat Strupen brought in to reinforce the town. Uh, the Gepard there will be able to get on target with its 20mm most likely and help out. The Gavardia only have the close range AT, so the Gavardia and Panzer IV should definitely help out with those engagements. But we do see the ME109 G2 BR21 coming in with its rockets to take out the OB on the top side. The OB did win an engagement against the IG, so took that out. But on the bottom side, it looks like artillery has come down. Uh, the 220mm off map was used to force back the Chernos here and a lovely surrender coming through from multiple Erzastropen. Oh, this is not good. Pixie is rushing up with a 203mm off map in reply but uh, is going to end up in the face of multiple Erzastropen. So that's a, bit, a little bit worrying for him. Uh, this Panzer III is lucky that stopped because ideally that would already be up on this road right now and uh, would have easy line of sight onto the 203 mil but we'll see if that can escape all of the Erzatz Trooper currently just running towards it to try and kill it but yeah it looks like it's gonna be safe for now as long as Pixie continues to micro that appropriately. Yak 1B flying around on the top side we do see that these units have ended up surrounded uh, probably the movement of the initial superlity uh, around the the edge of the forest here made that happen and then with the reinforcing Gavardia coming in on this top side it's, it's gave that flag back to Pixie. The engagement in the town is definitely falling in the favour of Pixie. There's just an overwhelming amount of infantry from him right now and Bitch doesn't quite match that. But I'm awfully surprised not to see the Gepard there and the Panzer IV used to support. I guess maybe Vich is more focusing at the moment in cleaning up uh, these units on the bottom side. He did manage to get the better of the off-map vehicle which is a huge loss for Pixie. 
But here comes the off map. Looks like <laughs> it was a suicidal off map. We basically off mapped the same location where it was, knowing that it would go down. And it does end up killing all of the Urzatstruppen, so it's not too bad. This Urzatstruppen, though, in a pretty awkward spot. Surprised it didn't force any of these other squads to unload or even kill any of those transports. Panzer III is forced back, so that's not going to kill any of the transports coming down the road anyway. But Vich trying to make as much ground as possible right now with his remaining infantry here. Going to be moving up the Gephardt to help out and brings up a Panzerstreck as well. And the main thing that Vich needs to do is get back control of the center. He's currently losing a lot of ground here. And if he relinquishes the town to Pixie, Pixie can just kind of set up AT guns to shoot these reinforcing rows, which could be really, really difficult to deal with for the 20th Panzer because they don't have anything heavy that can like t face tank those AT guns for a long period of time. But the PE3 there is going to take out the Pan Pack 40. That's really nice. IL2 looking for the kills onto the Panzer 4 and the Panzer 4G there. Uh, that's the Panzer 4H in the town. But IL2 currently getting a wing damage, but should be okay. They are very resilient. It doesn't want to hang over a 20 mil for too long. It will get forced back if it does regardless. We do see the Alfkara arriving on the top side in one of my favourite little recon vehicles, the SDKFZ-247B. But the T-34E might have something to say about that. May just kill those off nice and quickly. Panzer IV now engaging these Chernos. That's what I like to see. The price the Gepard isn't being used at close range still though. So Vich in order to prevent this IL-2 from doing damage, has invested into an AT-8, which he can place behind the town. Uh, not only will that uh, prevent future strikes from something like this IL-2, but it will also uh, be good for securing his reinforcing roads. Anyway, this IL-2 does take a lot of damage from this 20mm. I'm not sure it's going to be quite enough to shoot it down. The T-34E does get finished off by the Panzer IV-G on the main road, but IL-2 did pick off the other Panzer IV-H that was in the town. Now the uh, Panzer IV-E currently taking cover behind this hill as two T-34Es come up. And then we see uh, Triple Gavardia behind those. Currently uh, Vich's infantry is pretty run down. Only three men left in that squad, two men in the Ostropen. That uh, Ostropen just died and that's the only basically full health squad currently being chewed up. So Panzer III using its APCR shells on the T-34E with the help of the ME-109 should be able to pin that quite easily but was that a shot from that T-34E? Because that was pretty damn nasty. The loader's killed so I don't think it was. Maybe it was this one. Mo drove forwards briefly and found that shot. Nicely done either way. Looks like Pixie's going to gain control on this bottom side as he loses, loses control in the centre. So with the arrival of a lot of infantry for Vich, just pushing across the fields right now, in the back gardens of these houses, to demolish these Gavaria. 220mm off map in the centre now. Looks like that 220mm was drove from the bottom side of the map to the center to help out and that is going to give Vich both of the flags in the center that off map strike there just killed that PTRS squad as well that's really nice and with the 220 mil probably using up all of its strikes here he's actually using the vehicle to look for any surrenders of units that potentially would be pinned down but this is opening up a lot of ground right now and the Sturm Pioneers are only going to be able to basically come in and secure this ground even better. So he can set unload a position orders near this flag and this flag. And he's just gained so much ground from that off-map strike. Ultimately there was only one infantry squad left, but there we go. Do you see that T-34 going down? On the top side there. The Gavardia have made a little bit of ground on the top side. Almost pushing pressure over that flag, but we need to keep an eye on this center engagement for sure. The bottom side's now been broken down by Pixie. Pixie's going to look for the T for the Gepard. Does get the crew kill, but can the Pack 40 save that? It looks like it will do. The gun jam onto the T-34E will keep the Gepard alive for the time being. Now, of course, the Gepard is crew kill, but it can be recovered with a supply vehicle if needs be. IL-2 now taking shots from the 88 as well as the 20 mil of the Gepard so that's going to be forced back 
Oh, that Panzer IV got a little too close for comfort as the Gavardia do manage to use their AT grenade to take it out. The Triple Sturm Pioneers, I'm surprised to see that these aren't actually pushing up. I think they do have an order, but they're kind of blocked by the smoke right now, so they're not engaging the way that they would do. Oh, the advancement of the OB-25 is going to allow that to take out the Pack 40 very quickly indeed. It does trade the T-34E for the pleasure, but nice kill for the OB regardless. Pack 40s do actually cost more than T-34s, I believe, so good value regardless. And now Pixie can continue to use that OB to pin the infantry here. But two Panzer IVs on the way. Have to see if they can break down the OB. The OB can be pretty nasty against units like Panzer IVs because they pretty much have like 100% penetration with the heat rounds. Oh, lovely use of the Verflammen here. I really, really like this unit. It's a very strong unit that the 20th Panzer gets, the Verflammen. Really, really nice for destroying concentrated um, areas of infantry. IL-2 floating around the uh, the center of the map once again. Not needed currently, as the Panzer IV suicided previously. But uh, Vich still pushing forwards with a lot of infantry. I'm surprised to see him do this in the open. It seems a bit unnecessary when you could probably use the cover of the houses. But then again, you want as many machine guns on target as possible. And when you do outnumber the enemy severely, it doesn't really matter. And the ME109 coming in with the rockets onto the OB. Looks like... Bitch is trying to pin that down before engaging it with the Panzer IVs. But now the Panzer IV is going to be able to start breaking down some of these Gavardia squads while the OB falls back. IG has come up onto the ridge here. Going to be getting some shots onto the Gavardia in the open. Meanwhile, looks like Bitch is going to be bringing in a couple of T-34s to the town to support the remainder of these Ostropen. But he's now going to have to start relying on Gavardia, and this is where things can get pretty expensive. But we are in Phase B currently, so we should see Vich gain a significant advantage due to the Maverick deployment type. Pixie was just about trading evenly in Phase A, I would say, so didn't really manage to make much use of the Vanguard deployment type. But now in Phase B, the 60 point per minute advantage should allow Vich to get a leg up until Phase C. Nice bombing strike going to come in there and pin down three units of Panzergrands. Those two units in the open didn't have orders to head to cover, so probably going to end up getting killed off. That SU-76 PT currently engaging those from range and does take out one of the Panzergrands. Very nice indeed. Right, the double T-34s now engaging the Gavardia from a distance as the Ostrupen continues to engage with its machine gun, but has run out of Car 98 ammunition. And the double Panzer IVs have force back the Gavardia on the bottom side for the time being. So Vich is going to try and make a play to get his infantry across the open. The OB is still alive. The T-34E is still here. There's new, a new 45 mil, and an SU-76 PT is on its way. Those SU-76s can do quite a lot of damage uh, to a Panzer IV because, again, the Panzer IVs just don't have significant enough armor. All right, lovely rocket strike coming in. Another Verflammen behind the town does have two of those available and one fantastic thing about these Verflammens is they come with 12 rockets so they automatically reload after their first use and the SU-76 there does manage to get the crew kill onto the T-34 another T-34 going to be engaging that SU-76 though oh both crew killed that is very nasty indeed really nicely done by Pixie these SU-76s they do have the aim time bonus where they aim like a second quicker because they're open top. Oh no, that's not good. That's not good at all. Pixie finds one of the Panzer IVs on the bottom side, but not the second one. That could have easily been a double kill. I feel like Pixie's found a lot of value out of this IL-237 mil from the start of the game so far. The 88 was not quite uh, able to shoot that down, but that's going to allow... I think that was the SU-76 to clean up the second Panzer IV, so technically both of the IL-2 got the job done after forcing the other one to fall back. Now the OB is engaging this 88 from range, that is not good news. Right, but saying that, OB is going to engage the IG. There's two OBs here, so it looks like the OBs should win out. 
it does kind of depend usually between an OB and an IG engagement whichever fires first wins however with two of them firing I reckon this OB should survive whilst the IG goes down here yeah. so there we have that now the attack move order going to be given to head towards the ATA and clean that up in the open but look who's on the field now it's the boy to Stalin now the 84th Guards Rifles does have their own IS-2s but uh, looks like the 20th Panzer is going to be the first to bring that on the field SC-76 currently trying to use its HE ammunition to clean up the rest of these Ostwerpen these SU-76s can be killed at close range by the grenades of infantry squads due to them being open top so it does need to be careful that it doesn't get too close for comfort this T-34E finally starting to fall back Generally what I would do with something like a gun jammed unit is just send it back like almost towards the spawn so that when you do bring in a new supply truck you can easily fix it up and I think that's what he's going to try and do now. He's got the supply truck in the center, going to try and fix that up most likely. Right, ME109 G2 BR21. These do actually have a decent chance of maybe killing the SU-76s so there we go. We see the rockets come in. Dodged though by Pixie. Nice reverse order there. Stops that from hitting the mark. Then Pioneer going to be trying to get some flames into the top of that vehicle but not quite oh the Verflammen now coming down with its rockets can that get the job done the Pixie's going to break in all directions to try and save them one of them does go down this one does get forced to fall back and the 45 more unloading there might get the kill let's get the crew panic doesn't find the second shot SU-76 out of range, out of line of sight, sorry. So this Panzergren holding on to the point on the bottom side, uh, Vich really needs to reinforce this ASAP. He has now moved into phase C though, so currently Pixie has the advantage on income for the rest of the game. But Pixie minor defeat in 8 minutes, so he's got to sort that out as well. The Pioneers making short work of that infantry squad with their HE grenade, 45 mil managing to clean up one of the SU-76s. Now that's one of the problems with the SU-76s, they are very vulnerable uh, to fire from AT guns, but they are pretty good for dealing with things like Panzer IVs. So that's what Pixie's trying to do here with the use of the SU-76s. Right, P3 coming in with its bombing strike. I think it's trying to bomb the Gepard itself or maybe just the AT gun next to it. Does manage to kill the AT gun, also forces back the Gepard at the same time. I would say that was a pretty successful bombing strike. Another AT-8 is on the top side of the town. The one on the bottom side has been killed off most likely by the OBs. And while these Urzats to open in the open, they're a goner. IL-2 now on its way to take care of the Boydish Darlin. Oh, does get the kill onto the... Oh no, that's a massive strike! Pixie manages to take out both the Panzer three. And the Boyter Stalin. Wow, the value of this IL-2. 37 mil. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Very, very nice strike there indeed. Leaves Vich in a very awkward position after investing a lot of points into those vehicles. I'm pretty sure the Boyter Stalin didn't get even a single kill. But we now see the Verflammen engaging the SU-76 on the top side kills off both of the infantry squads as well lovely strike in return from Vich I think he only used like half of the rockets in that strike and that was only two maybe three rockets from the initial strike but either way I'm going to be putting another strike a little bit further back just to try and clean up any potential infantry that's left over there All right, meanwhile Pixie now making a play. Gavardia heading the opposite direction up this hill. Towards the burning wrecks of the Panzer Fours, but two Panzer Fours do await them. If the IL-2 gets reloaded, that could be some very dead Panzer Fours on the bottom side. We do see this IL-2 37mm on the way. It has had its bombs deactivated, so Pixie looking for the kills there. Let's see if he can make this happen. Meanwhile in town, just more infantry engagements. And we do see the turret stuck Panzer 4G there. Looks like the SU-76 doing some damage. But here we go. Oh wow, that 
Panzer IV tanked so many shots from the IL-2 there that the second one is still alive. Now Vich forced to respond with the ME-109, going to be coming in with the rocket plane there. I'd like to see almost those rockets used for one of these OBs in the open because currently uh, that's able to do a lot of damage to units in the open. And well, looks like that was Evac Winchester left straight after. I would have, yeah, should have probably stuck around for the IL-2 there. Oh, that's going to be a bailed out Verflammen. The IL-237 does come in and take out one of the Panzer IVs in the center. The 88 is very close to the IL-2, so we could see that actually get shot down. But here we go for another strike potentially on the bottom side. It looks like the IL-2 lost line of sight onto the Panzer IV briefly. Did not manage to uh, find the kill. But the Gavardi are getting very close here. Vich notices. Can he pin that down in time? Going to give it a go. Oh, the AT grenade was thrown. That's all that needs to be done. It's forced to fall back now oh, into the line of sight of an AT gun. Oh, this is really not good news for Vich. Pixie pushing forwards massively on this bottom side. It's currently 15 to 9 in favour of Pixie. So the income swinging back in favour of Pixie has seemed to have given him enough to uh, make back some ground. Now the Panzer IV goes down. These Gavardia can certainly take up a lot of defensive positions here. But of course, Bitch still holds the town. So, the flanks aren't actually as bad as you would expect for Bitch. He currently controls this flag, this flag, and this flag. There's a large concentration of flags in this town, and currently he is the one who controls it. So it's actually 12 to 12, especially as these Stostrup now take control of the flag on the top side. So Pixie makes a big win on the bottom and in the center with all of the armor now being killed, the Verflammen being taken out. Like this should mean that uh, Pixie can push this back quite effectively, but we'll have to wait and see. Pixie now investing into an IS-2-1943. I'm a little worried about what this means for Pixie because at this point, this is probably the last unit you'd want to use, in my opinion. Because you've killed all of the armor already, right? So that kind of tells me that he's just lacking infantry at this point. Which is a pro big problem. Big problem indeed. Anyway, T-34E. Going to be starting to do some serious damage to these Panzergrens. These Panzergrens don't have Panzerfausts. So going to be easy pickings for a T-34. But he's going to have to be careful of these Panzer threes coming up the road. At range... APCR shells. These have such good accuracy, these Panzer 3s. Oh no! That was a one-shot APCR kill. That is that is not what Pixie wanted to see at all. IL-2, 37. Going to be coming in on the top side. Another kill for the IL-2, 37. Wow. Pixie, man. Getting so much value from these IL-2s in this game. And it's not like Vich hasn't tried to invest in AA. It's just... He's allowed his AA to be broken down, especially in the open here by the OB. Uh, the Gepards were killed on the bottom side with like an, that tank engagement. We're now going to see the IL-2 coming on the bottom side. And those two Panzer threes, if Pixie can keep line of sight, will likely go down to that IL-2 once again. We're going to see the Verflammen there engaging this infantry in the open. Looking to uh, pin those down and kill those off. But here we go. IL-2 comes in for the shots. That's one down. Can it find the second? It will. It will find two more. Oh, I'm just waiting to see the kill list on this IL-2. The ME-109 G2 BR-21 finally going to pay attention to the IL-2 there. Unfortunately, until these rockets are unloaded onto a target, this ME-109 is going to be pretty slow. Now this IL-2 getting a little too close to the 88. That 88 almost out of ammunition though, I think. One HE shell remains. And it's now gone. Well, <laughs> that ME-109, very, very close range rocket strike onto the SU-76 there. Going to get forced back by the Napalm. Panzer 4H, trying to get the long range shot in, does not find it. Yeah, Vich has uh, had his infantry broken down in the center. 
Pixie surely going to be able to take back some of these flags. Currently 15 to 9. So Vich is going to lose the game in 13 minutes and 45 seconds. But I'm still not really seeing any infantry coming in from Pixie. So Pixie's going to have to be super careful. Got three. Oh, is that two 37 mil? No, it is three 37 mil AA pieces coming in. Yeah, the lack of infantry availability is a bit scary right now. But as long as Pixie can get his units into position ASAP, it may not be a problem. Like if he can get the IL-2, or not the IL-2, the IS-2 on the other side of this town so that it can shoot down the road, there is nothing the Panzer IVs are going to be able to do about it. I believe the 20th Panzer can get access to Pack 43s which it would have to use to break down the IS-2. But ultimately the IS-2 would be a massive roadblock for the 20th Panzer trying to get into the town. Currently uh, we see this OB having a go at the Panzer IV. If it can find a direct hit, it should be able to find the kill. Nope. The Panzer IV with a two-star veteran seat, accurate as ever. And the Panzer Grand there, also with their burst of machine gun fire, did a little bit of damage. That's going to be the SU-76 engaging the Panzer IV. Oh, the Panzer IV gets another kill there. Those Panzer IVs can be absolute snipers. But here comes the IL-2. Uh, that is looking for a strafing run onto the 88. Interesting. Uh, the 37 mil has been unloaded in front of the 88. The SU-76 is engaging that, and well, the 88 goes down. So this IL-2 actually has free reign to take out this Panzer IV now. But on the top side... Severe lack of infantry availability for Pixie right now. He's currently reinforced the front line with two leader squads. And it is worth mentioning that the Vanguard deployment type can quite often uh, run out of availability because they, they stack early game, right? As a Vanguard deck, you generally expect to win in the first 20 minutes because that's your sort of time schedule. But when somebody plays Maverick against you, it really like blunts that initial push you're supposed to have and so into the late game availability really plays a big point in this game and well we do see that flag going in the way of Vich. The SDK of Z7 did move up and absolutely annihilate the 37 mil there. Another 37 mil is being brought up but that's going to probably suffer the same fate Panzergrand's getting the better of that Gavardia squad most likely. And there's these two Gavardia squad with one man in each. They can probably both get cleaned up very quickly by a single unit of Panzergrands. Meanwhile in the town, Pixie's infantry is slowly but surely being broken down. And I feel like there was a bit of an opportunity here for Pixie to really just cut off the reinforcing roads going into the town. And that would have solidified a lot of points here. But ultimately, Pixie's waited too long. And now, Vich is making a bit of, a bit of a comeback. 37 mil. Gonna take out that SDK of Z71. Surprised to see that actually go down. IL-2 now coming in for another strike. Towards the center. Oh, Panzergren did manage to clean up both of those Gavardia squads, as I expected. Now the continued engagement against Gavardia should go in the way of the Panzergrenz because of the double MG-42. Uh, MG this IL-2 did not get the shot onto the Panzer IV. Now looking for the shot onto the Opa Blitz munition instead, but targets the only one that doesn't have ammunition, so I'm pretty sure Vich is happy about that. And we do see the T-34 coming up here. That's going to be engaged by the 37mm. That 37mm will get killed very quickly by a T-34E, but there is, of course, the TIS-2 right next to it. Oh, goodbye, T-34. Oh, lovely use of the MU-109 GTBR-21. That's going to wipe out another unit of Gavardia, but the bombing strike's going to return the favour on the side of Pixie. Panzergrenz, though, they are in heavy cover. The Gavardia are in light cover, technically. But the Panzergrenz will kill those off very shortly indeed. But IS-2 1943 creeping in on this bottom side. Uh, the one in the town is currently moving up to the top. 
side looking to capture that flag but this is a very very difficult position now for pixie like working without infantry is like so difficult it really is I had a lot of experience of it playing certain battles in campaign and like the ai just makes it hard enough as it is so against a player that's putting you under constant pressure i can imagine it's an absolute nightmare but either way the il2 37 there can take a lot of damage from the SDK of Z71, but does manage to get away for the time being. Or oh, another T34 versus IS2 engagement. Means poor T34s, man. <laughs> no care in the world from Vich. <laughs> they just get their IS2 just constantly moving forward to find those shots. Means IS2s do take a while to reload, though. Panzergren in a position to soon take out a lot of units uh, just an attack move order from that Panzergren could really open up this bottom side entirely and Pixie's really hanging on by a thread right now I don't think Vich quite realizes just yet although saying that maybe Vich is out of uh, out of uh, availability as well nope never mind another Panzergren on the way could that potentially be the last one I don't know but we do see the Verflammen that's going to be coming down on top of the IS-2 1943. Ooh. Over time, those Verflammens can certainly break down IS-2s, that's for sure. But I don't think that's the problem. Because ultimately, the IS-2 can't kill anything in the heavy cover. So, yeah. The IS-2s aren't really that effective at this point. Especially considering most of the armor on the side of the 20th Panzer has already been destroyed. I am a little bit concerned though on for Vich though that he doesn't have any AT and what maybe Pixie could do if he has enough IS-2s is sit an IS-2 on each of the flags forcing the infantry out of the forests to try and contest and I think that's what Pixie's trying to do here he's literally just sitting the IS-2 on the flag only issue with Pixie doing that is that there is still the Verflammen alive so the Verflammen might be able to just kill off the IS-2s if they stack on the objectives. The Pack 43 has been brought in for this top side. That does not actually take any damage. It does get pinned, but ultimately it's still just moving into position, so probably doesn't matter too much. Oh, the IL-2 bombing strike here onto the Panzergrens. That's really important. If Pixie can break down these Panzergren squads, it's going to leave him in a really good spot to control this entire bottom side. The Pixie is slowly but surely gaining flags. But it's such, it's such like balancing on a knife edge right now between both of these players. They're both suffering for availability. I think Mitch is taking great care not to use too many infantry squads at a time. But we now see the J87 coming in. Completely forgot the 20th Panzer had these. Plus the munitions should easily get the job done. Oh, there we go. IS-2 down. And the one big problem with using these IS-2s to capture flags is it leaves them sitting ducks to artillery and airstrikes. And that's what we just saw on that bottom, strike, bottom side. I was more concerned about the artillery, but in, now we see the JU-87 with the cluster munitions. That's an even bigger problem. Well, that uh, 37 mil does take care of the IG there. Pack 43, just got to hit one more shot. Okay, job done. ME 109 not needed. Going to look for the rocket strike onto the IL IS-2 instead. Oh, we see another T-34 sacrificed to the AT gods on this bottom side. That's a spawning and a loader kill. Can the Panzergrens unload in time? Will they unload in time? I don't know what uh, Rich is trying to do here. Probably just hasn't given them the order yet. Yeah, there we go. The T-34 saved for now. So, Verflammen looking for the rocket strike onto this flag as we can see. The IS-2s are no longer there. Pioneers trying to be found by these IS-2s, but Pixie just can't get to them. The thing is, you can dance around all day with infantry squads in heavy cover, and it's very, very, very difficult for the IS-2s to spot them uh, because their optics are so bad. Well, their optics are good, but uh, 
you need something with uh, very good optics or exceptional optics to really spot infantry and heavy cover effectively. Uh, looks like the Panzergrens here are going to find the Gavardia. Oh, the MG42s, when they open up, they do so much damage. Even to the Gavardia in heavy cover and Pixie's infantry now in trouble for sure. Two full squads of Panzergrens up against the, the Gavardia. Can the P3 get a decent bombing strike? This is going to be important. If this can hit the mark onto the Panzergrens with a lot of health, then it will. Yeah. It will help out, but uh, in this case, misses the mark. Uh, the 45 might be able to take care of the T34. Now, seeing the Pack 43 engage the 45 more in the open on the top side. Uh, looks like those pioneers were found using the GV Comlotti. The IS-2 is dead. Like One of the IS-2s has died. Did that just die to the strike? Maybe it was the HE shell. The HE grenade from the Pioneer maybe found the kill. Or the... Actually, maybe not the kill. It might have surrendered it. I don't know. Either way. Um, yeah, this Panzergren's still full health. So that's going to clean up the Gavardia. This Panzergren's moving in. This one's going to get in the church and potentially kill off anything else it sees. I think Kovic is trying to use this as almost recon for the area so that he can get pressure over this flag. But another Panzergren arriving in the center of the town is not good news for Pixie. We're going to see the P3 probably finally kill this Pack 43. But JU87 on the way to kill another IS-2. But is the Yak-1 going to let that happen? Probably not. Looks like Vich actually gave that an order to attack the Yak-1B, which is really smart. So now the Yak-1B goes down. He's dealt with that fighter. Can the JU-87 drop its payload? I don't think it will. No, it's kind of caught in an awkward situation there. And now this new Yak-1B is going to be coming in on its tail, potentially going to shoot it down. I think Vich is trying to turn that in to engage the Yak-1B again. Oh, ME109G2 does find the Yak kill, but the J87 going down is pretty vital. You can see these IL2s used for their bombs. Evac Winchester, though. Surprising, actually. Unless it's intentional for Pixie to let these reload quickly. But there being an, a T34 there, you'd think he'd keep maybe one of them around to kill that. Anyway, that Gavardi is being spotted. That's going to get rid of the salient. Uh, these Panzergrens are taking control of the flag on the bottom side. In the center, IS-2s trying to maintain ground. They can be way more aggressive, I feel. I feel like Vich has shown nothing but like Panzergrens without Panzerfaust. We haven't seen a single Panzergren with Panzerfaust throughout the whole game. He's killed the uh, Pack 43 on this top side now, so... These IS-2 should be pretty safe to push onto the Panzergrens. The only thing that's uh, a problem here is that if the IS-2s try and push past the infantry and don't spot them, they can find themselves behind enemy lines, and then the front line end up, ends up like pushing over you, and it's really annoying. Because armor doesn't have quite the same presence as um, infantry on the front line, but it does manage to find the Panzergrens there. We'll unseat them over time. But... Ultimately, that's all Mitch really has to do, is just kind of run away with them. Uh, maybe in the wrong direction in this case. And what probably should have come down to the other buildings. We're going to get back into cover there, actually. The IS-2 make short work of the Pioneers. ME-109 coming in with the rocket strike. Lost, loses line of sight briefly. That 37mm. Going to be firing away. Oh, JU-87. That's another JU-87. D-5. So he actually has two of them. Well, that one should be able to land its cluster munitions, so that's going to be a dead 1944. And 1943 is transmission damage currently. That must be really frustrating. It's such a balancing act from both players right now. They don't want to overinvest because they both have like no availability left on, on both of their divisions. This is like really coming down to the wire. Absolutely ridiculous. And Gavania catching out pioneers before they get into cover is pretty important. That's uh, going to allow the Vizivod and Gavardia there to get a lot of value onto that squad. 
25 mil now looking for the kill onto the T-34, but ultimately Vich is now going to use the T-34 to engage the Gavardia. Can the 45 find the kill? It should be able to. Yep, one shot kill. We're seeing the strafing run come in there from the ME109G2 onto the 37. He's trying to basically pin that so that the uh, JU87 can find the kill onto the IS-2943. So that's another one being broken down. And yeah, over time, I feel like that's only going to continue. Like, Vich is just going to be able to continuously break down these IL-2s whilst maintaining better infantry availability. Uh, Panzergrens, though. And they are getting pinned on this bottom side. It's 12 to 12. We're 46 minutes in. Look at this pack 43 sneaking through to find a kill onto an IS-2. Now this top side is literally held by three AT guns, one man in this GV Comlotti squad, and the 37 mil on the top side. All of this infantry, if it just pushed forwards, would easily just take ground here. And as soon as Vich realizes it, it's all over for Pixie. Mm, strafing run coming in. These ME1 and I do have to be careful though. These 37 mils can be lethal. That Panzergren got forced to fall back and without this Panzergren supporting them initially, this could be bad news for Pixie on the bottom side. But look at this! There's even more availability! Three more units of Panzergrens. So he's pretty much doing what he did to Gonzo here. Bitch using overwhelming infantry availability <laughs> to find the victory. Double IL-2 coming in with the bombs onto the Pack 43 The Pack 43s already found the kill onto the IS-2, so I doubt the Vich really cares that that's dead. This is... this is crazy. That does that stop, and it has no ammo on its car 98. We're gonna get, have to get within 100 meters to use the MP40 uh, in order to get a kill. Look at him run forwards. <laughs> I don't know why he's looking so silly there. But um, yeah, that can kill a 45 more as long as it doesn't get targeted by the 37. Well, there we go. Uh, IL-2 coming in with another bombing strike. Panzergrens do reveal themselves. Yeah, I think the reason Pixie's just been using the bombs on these and not the 37 to take out the T-34 previously was just so that he could use them to reload quicker or break down these Panzergrens. But he's kind of been trumped here quite a bit by these the triple Panzergrand squad on the way there's no amount of bombs that are going to stop those from killing his infantry squad just quick enough oh lovely strike from the Verflammen kills off the one infantry squad that was preventing that flag from being captured well, they're saying that this Cavardi is still providing plenty of presence damn well here comes the triple does have to be careful having them all in the same place because ultimately there is still the P3 available and the two IL2s. But, oh, Pixie must feel so bad right now seeing more infantry on its way whilst have having none himself. Like, as soon as I saw that IS2 come out behind the town when all of the armor had just died, it just told me immediately that there was not going to be any infantry left. Because it was just the wrong unit to bring out at that point. Like, ultimately, when Pixie had the advantage across the entire map, if he'd had, like, one more card of infantry in the late game, it would have won him the game. Simple as that. But now, Panzergrenz, they've found the Gavardia here. Oh, that's bad news. That is a very dead Gavardia squad. And that's going to open up so many flags in the center of the map. That's going to be one, two, three, four extra captured immediately. And, well, it, there we go. Pixie's going to surrender. And after 49 minutes and 33 seconds, Vich finds the victory. What a game. What a game. That really came down to the wire. Both sides were very low on availability. I think Vich was being super careful with how many Panzergrens he applied to each engagement so that he had enough to, to find the victory in the end. Look how close those kills and losses are. 
4,670 kills to 4,545 losses for Pixie. So Pixie actually had the positive kill death, but Vich, with the extra availability, pulled through. Like, that is crazy close. But I do feel like Vich let this IL-2 get too much value. He did have the ME109 G2s, so I'm surprised that they didn't come out sooner to deal with the IL-2, especially like after at least the first two strikes, like the Panzer Fours going down, killed the off-map vehicle, uh, killed three Panzer Threes, killed the Boyish Starling. Like the Panzer Three Boyish Starling kill combo kill, like oh that was rough. The Jack One B sniped all of those initial uh, recon aircraft. I did like the use of these recon aircraft though. I think Vich made um, made a point that these can be pretty useful. Um, P3, the bombing strikes there, taking out the AT guns was pretty important. Um, but another IL-2 getting plenty of kills with armor and another IL-2 there again, more armor kills. All of the armor getting broken down by mostly aircraft on the side of Pixie. Um, these SG-76s though, they did uh, pay themselves off very nicely. I think these are like 35 points of piece and killing a T-34 for 50 points is uh, obviously already paying itself off. Plus a Panzer 4G, plus a Gepard, also doing damage to infantry. Like that is really, really nice. OB there getting the 88 kills really good. And there was a lot of like nice plays coming out of Pixie. I mean, both plays, great plays coming out from both sides, but yeah, just availability uh, winning the, the day in the end. Uh, that Panzer 3... I mentioned how this T-34E going down was really, really bad for Pixie and how it left the Panzer III in a position, even though like a Panzer III had been traded for the T-34E. Having the armor left over on Vich's side of things allowed him to take advantage of these Chernos completely and um, swung that bottom side massively uh, towards the beginning of the game. Panzer Grens at range do very well against the infantry that... Um, Pixie decided to bring in. Verframen's fantastic, fantastic artillery. Uh, only one IS-2 kill. I expect to see more kills on these two Verframens actually, but um, breaking down the Gavardia, you just see so many Gavardia squads getting killed off here. Pioneer SVT actually trading really, really well there. Uh, that SDK of Z7-1, again killing more Gavardia. So many Gavardia kills across the board. Um, and then late game, well, we see the IS-2s going down to the JU-8075s. So yeah, there we go. Great stuff. That was a fantastic game. And if it's that close in game one, well, I wonder what's going to happen in game two. All the play for moving on. Although, of course, Vich is one step up. If Vich wins the next game, then he moves on to the final. That's it from me. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.